Do you have any other questions for me, counselor? I have a question. Have you played a first-person shooter recently? It actually owes a part of its design to the world's first Asian female lead. That's Chung Lee, you imbecile. This is why I left you for your best friend. Cyberpunk 2077. Dying Light 1 or 2. Or any of the countless Call of Duties? These titles, as with virtually every FPS, in the last 15 years, owes a very integral part of their design to a game that, ironically, isn't a first-person shooter. No game since Doom, has altered the landscape of the FPS, more than Mirror's Edge. It really is difficult, to overstate the impact Mirror's Edge has had, on video game design since its release, as a point of reference. In 2020, the global video game market is valued at 203 billion American dollars, give or take, and roughly 23% of that, is generated by the first person shooter category. 50 billion dollars. And I can't think of a single FPS, produced after Mirror's Edge, which did not utilize some, or all, of its groundbreaking motion mechanics. If you have not had the pleasure of Mirror's Edge yet, I don't blame you. It was about as successful at the cash register, as the British Dental Association is at correcting the orientation of the English population's teeth. Trust me, I would know. Going all the way back to the earliest days of the first-person shooter. Movement, back then, felt as if you were gliding around on ice skates. You hear, but do not sense, footsteps. At most, the weapons visibly sways back and forth, in an animated loop while in motion, as a thinly veiled attempt, to mimic footsteps. If you have played any vintage first-person game, your quote-unquote character, really is just a floating disembodied camera, with a floating disembodied arm attached to a rifle. Even in legendary titles, like Half-Life, the change in Gordon Freeman's speed, is not accompanied by any sense of momentum. It's as if he can instantaneously toggle, between two different velocities, with no acceleration or deceleration, and he does not even have a climb animation. Gordon Freeman simply floats up the ladder. That all changed with Faith Connors. I apologize. Faith Connors, your character in Mirror's Edge, her motion mechanics broke the barrier, for how movement could be felt in a first-person game. When she jumps from one rooftop to another, and land on a dark-covered scaffolding, you feel the impact of her descent. When she does a tiger roll, the camera spirals from her perspective. You view the disorienting tumble as she sees it. When she slides through an opening beneath an industrial ventilator, you sense the friction of her white cargo pants against the concrete. When she climbs a ladder, the camera zigs and zags as you ascend each run. When she vaults over a hurdle, you see Faith throw her legs over the obstacle. When she accelerates, Faith's arm swings in ever-widening arcs, as her pace increases. When you look down, you see the stride of her legs. And, the most convincing shadow I've ever seen. The bob of her head, and the sway of her hair, is perfectly matched, to the steps of her rock-climbing shoes. You perceive Faith's motion, as if a GoPro got glued to her forehead. She will even raise up one, or both hands, against a vertical surface when pressed up to it. No game before Mirror's Edge, has ever given so much attention to all the little details, for the animation of a character you can't even look at. The developers, DICE, succeeded in what was once thought impossible, in transmitting the sensation of actually being a virtual character. You're not a player, you are Faith Connors.
Of course, all of this would be for naught, if it possessed anything less, than absolutely perfect controls. Unlike some franchises, let's take Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed, where the computer calculates all the movement for you, and all you need to do, is little more than hold forward on the controller. Probably the most groundbreaking thing about the motion mechanics in Mirror's Edge, is the complete precision you have, over every aspect, of, Faith Connor's moveset. It is remarkable how everything feels both weighty and fluid. Need to slide into an opening underneath an air ventilator? Press stuck, while running. Need to wall run across a large chasm? Approach the wall at about a 30 degree angle, and jump, without letting go of forward. Need to reach a tall ledge, by leaping off one wall onto another? Jump towards the side, of one structure opposing the other, press the 180 degree turn button, then click jump again. Need to tiger roll to disperse the kinetic energy of a long fall? Press crouch, right before the impact. Need to glide down a ladder, click duck, while climbing, to slide down quickly. Nothing. Is. Automated. And it's remarkable, how everything has the feel of weight, without the sacrifice of fluidity. You know, 15 years ago, I said to myself, this has to be the most immersive game ever made. And all these years later, I wish I was wrong. Of graphics technology become better since Mirror's Edge? Yeah, of course. But the thought, that ran through my mind, back then, was just how grounded the game looked and felt. Even though, to me, what Faith does, she may as well have been Deadpool. Considering my fat ass can't even climb over my ever dwindling sense of self-worth. How the art direction came together, and how perfectly. It complemented the core gameplay. Nearly all games, try their damned hardest, to convince you of the visual history, within its graphical background. Grand Theft Auto with its broken, and pothole-ridden pavement of Los Angeles. The Division. Demonstrating its exaggeration of rundown buildings, and dilapidated cars of inner city Washington DC. Spider-Man. Okay fine. Manhattan in that specific game, is cleaner than the actual one. But you know what I mean. And Fallout displaying a desolate, deserted, post-apocalyptic backdrop, of an alternate reality Boston. Not Mirror's Edge. Even though the game takes place in the completely fictional city of Singapore. A seemingly pleasant oasis where crime is virtually non-existent, achieved by a suppressive political class controlling the people and the media. The game looks and feels more real, than reality. Mirror's Edge is a testament to porcelain white. The skyscrapers and skyline are porcelain white. The emergency fire escaped staircases, porcelain white. The metro underground subway, porcelain white. The corporate office interiors spaces. Porcelain white. The steel construction beams. Porcelain white. Even the trees are porcelain white. The endless. Alabaster cityscape. Is punctuated. By the most intense colors I've ever witnessed in a virtual world. Tangerine orange commercial banners emblazoned across high rises. Cerulean blue tarps strewn about construction site scaffolding. Canary yellow paint denoting rooftop access stairwells and modeled after Tokyo's storm drain. The skittles green for the hurricane aqueduct beneath the city. You can palpably sense the degrees of humidity and temperature in each area. Boxes, ramps, and zip lines, you leap off of, to reach otherwise unreachable areas, are sensibly placed within the surroundings. Rarely appearing arbitrarily out of place. Look, at this world. The layout, is immaculately matched to the art direction. Each zone, is intelligently laid out as if it were blueprinted by city planners and architects. Take this example. Jump your way from one rooftop to the next, by vaulting off ramps highlighted with red. Over chasms, some separated by a meter. While others, separated by eight. 
until you land on a balcony to an available fire escape. And then, you find yourself running up the neck of a crane, leaping onto a steel reinforcement truss, then landing on top of a stack of cardboard boxes. No other title which I can think of, so effectively communicated itself from the moment you lay your eyes on it. You know the exact purpose of ever object. These days, you'll see this game's significance in nearly every modern first-person shooter. Some franchises, like Dying Light 1 or 2, and Cyberpunk 2077, pretty much copies Mirror's Edge's motion mechanics wholesale. While others, like Activision's Call of Duty, or Ubisoft's Far Cry, borrows bits and pieces. Then there are others still, which aren't even FPS's, like any given Assassin's Creed, Spider-Man, or Watch Dogs, that outright steals Faith Connor's movement system, albeit with a much more automated design. If you've watched two or more of my videos, hit subscribe and like. It really helps me to make new videos. Mirror's Edge, although it did not set the box office ablaze back in 2008. It revolutionized how all of us play first-person games today. If you have not tried it, it comes highly recommended. It will be worth your time as well. Comment down below. And if you didn't like something I talked about, or didn't like something in this video essay, also let me know by commenting below. Take care and see you around.